Um, thanks for asking me to speak today. I apologise in advance, but I have a cold. If you can't hear me, tell me to shout up. I can't hear my own volume. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you about um, Hadrian's Cavalry. <clears throat> um, what is it? It's an Arts Council England funded project. Um, we got the money um, in 2015 and the money's for three years. The exhibition, I'm, I'm nicely branded here, which is not normal, um, is on now, so if you have spare time, do go. <clears throat> the main part of it really is a dispersed exhibition, um, which is um, at 10 museums along Hadrian's Wall, <clears throat> but then there's also a learning and arts programme, an events programme. At Chester's, we'll have a, um, we're having a, an art installation, and then one of our events will be part of um, the experimental archaeology, and all along the way through the exhibition, there's been research and there's research going on. <clears throat> so, the project um, is wall-wide. You can see um, here on our maps, we go from <clears throat> wall, um, our Bay and Wall's End in the east right through to Maryport um, on the west. <clears throat> All the museums who are involved um, are on um, the left there. And it's kind of, we, we were saying, oh, it's a, world, a worldwide first that we you know, have this dispersed exhibition, but it's not really. We did a lot of practice um, in um, in this ex this sort of dispersed exhibition um, style. So in 2014, no, 2014 um, there was a small exhibition called um, Wallface, which was another dispersed exhibition also funded by Arts Council England, where all the museums, <clears throat> all the museums listed there, as well as Bird Oswald, Rome Fort, um, borrowed a portrait from the National Portrait Gallery of an archaeologist or an antiquarian who was relevant to their site. Um, and it was a way to kind of demonstrate that the curators on Hadrian's Wall worked well together. Um, we already met fairly regularly, but we'd never done anything formally to prove that we were a network, were part of um, the Hadrian's Wall on the wider Roman frontiers, um, World Heritage Site. There's lots of um, groups within the management plan. The curators wanted to show that we could work together. So it was um, put together by Bill Griffiths as the chair <clears throat> and all the partners um, are part of the chair. Um, part of the board. So, we want, decided to go for the Roman Cavalry as our exhibition because we feel that lots of members of the public, and even probably lots of archaeologists, when they think of you know Romans on Hadrian's Wall, it's Italians in red skirts. Um, obviously, we know it's not that. But we wanted to talk about a different story. Lots of our museums on the wall talk about the infantry and the role of the, them on the wall, but <clears throat> the cavalry really were quite important, and they're not really um, talked about very much in many of the museums. Um, and um, there's a lot of bling, so we wanted to bring some of the bling from there. And because of um, Hayden's Wall having uh, units from all over the empire, the cavalry units were really good in to kind of show where they were from. So, <clears throat> it wasn't the only reason that we chose cavalry, but the cavalry units were paid better than the infantry, so had more money. There's some amazing artefacts. <clears throat> and what we wanted to do with the exhibition was not just to attract you know, Roman military equipment specialists or um, Roman enthusiasts, but we also wanted to try to show how some of the material was beautiful and pieces of art in its own right. So <clears throat> our plan was to borrow amazing pieces from national but also international museums as well as um, private collectors, bring it to the wall and each museum do a different um, kind of theme because we wanted people to go to more than one museum. So. <clears throat> As well as the cavalryman's equipment, which is this slide, the horse also had its own um, amazing um, equipment. And some of our sites have pieces. So Vindolanda, they found um, the remnants of a chamfron and other pieces. <clears throat> but we know of material all over the um, empire that we wanted to bring in and show um, people what there was. What <clears throat> there was. So how does it work? Ten museums. Who's going to go to ten museums when it's all about Hadrian's cavalry? <clears throat> What we have is just a horrible diagram, don't feel you need to read it, but <clears throat> in terms of the practicalities of how the project worked, there's a project board which had all the partners on, so it's someone from Tyne and Weir Archives and Museums, English Heritage, the Vindolanda Trust, Tully House Museum and Sen House Museum, so the five partners in the um, project, which represented ten museums, um, and as well as um, our bankers, who are the Na Northumberland National Park, who stepped in with 12 hours notice to help us um, finish the funding bid because of um, technicalities. <clears throat> and each um, organisation obviously has a very different structure. 
So it's quite tricky to work with five partners, some of which are very local, but I work for English Heritage, which is a national organisation. We're lucky that the project manager, uh, which is Minerva Heritage, Lisa Keys, along with Nigel Mills Heritage, had been the project managers for Wallface. So they already understood a little bit about <clears throat> how each organisation worked. And um, that was a real key thing because with Wallface, it was a very short project, it was very small. We found we spent a lot of time trying to work out who in which organisation was um, you know, the relevant person for different aspects. So <clears throat> it was really important for us to have this structure set up um, so there was a board for the exhibition and the project, but there was also a separate marketing group. And one thing that came out of Wallface <clears throat> was that the marketing people from each organisation knew who each other's, you know, knew of each other's existence. But they started their marketing group for Wallface, and they continued to meet on a regular basis, even if Hadrian's Cavalry hadn't gone in their head. So that's been really beneficial to all the organisations because now. We always try to avoid events clashes because obviously we're all, you know, often not fighting for the same audience, but you know what I mean. Um, and <clears throat> so a real benefit of that was getting everyone talking a lot more. Well, um, Hayden's Cavalry's continued that in a very focused manner, but even when Hayden's Cavalry is finished, we know those conversations will keep going and we're working much better together um, across the, um, the stretch of the wall. <clears throat> so this is our... Um, um, little map and because we have 10 museums we all wanted to do different things we did we want this exhibition to bring people to our sites um, we're lucky all the curators get on so we um, sat down with a big list of um, what are the different themes that you'd like to cover um, and carry and also who's getting what objects so for example <clears throat> I'm going to talk for the case studies just about my sites just because that's what I know most about but um, at Chester's because we have a cavalry it is a cavalry fort We've talked about how uh, the soldiers lived and looked after their lived with and looked after their horses. Um, at Corbridge, we've gone for no military things at all. Really, we've talked about representation of the horse in Roman art. At Vindolanda, for example, they have um, references to a specific cavalryman, Tagomas. So they've built their exhibition around kind of the individual cavalryman. And each museum's done different things. Um, Mary Port has focused on a pona, and we really wanted to do that. So. <clears throat> It was also what space do people have at each site. Housesteads, when I've been to the museum at Housestead, you'll know it's really quite small. So I've got, just got one case there, but it's still a case that makes an impact. Whereas at Tully House and at Segadunum, they've got whole galleries. So you're able to do a lot more um, and bring, bring things in. And it was, you know, who's going to get what things. And Bill Griffiths will tell you, who's the, the chair, that at the beginning of the project, we sat down and said, you know, in a dream, what would we want from what museums, you know, what amazing finds would we want? We wrote a massive list thinking we'll never get even half of that. We were so lucky. Almost every museum that we asked for gave us what we wanted. So then we were like, oh, now we might have to, you know, work out who wants what. And for example, at Housestead's house is extremely isolated. So for security reasons, I couldn't get any of the bling at Housestead's. So we were, had to become, become a lot more imaginative. But because everyone had their own topic and we all get on, we were, there was no fight. Someone said, oh, well, you can have that and I will have this. And it was really nice, I think, for the Arts Council and other people who were funding and involved, seeing how um, we work <laughs> worked quite well. <clears throat> As I said, we didn't want it to just be the same audience that already comes to our own sites. We wanted to try and broaden the audience. Um, and some of these pieces, the cavalry equipment, um, really are amazing pieces of work. You know, they are beautiful. They would fit in an art gallery. Um, a lot, some of the cavalry pieces were in the um, big exhibition on bronzes um, down in London as an art exhibition. So we wanted to um, <clears throat> show that. But as well as bringing arts visitors in, we wanted to bring um, arts into our uh, project. So one of the um, project aims was um, community artwork for each site. So Karen McDougall is an arts learning coordinator. Um, was commissioned to make an artwork with some of the communities local to those sites. So at Corbridge, see here, um, are um, the first school um, made um, paper pulp reliefs inspired by our stone sculptures. Um, and then at Halsteads, we've done um, a cape version of a Roman mile, uh, milestone. And through the project, Karen's been able to um, get over 200 arts awards for, the, for schools involved, um, schools and Brownie Uni. So that's been a real uh, big success. And every art 
piece is again different for each site and works for each site. Um, the one at the Great Northern Museum, if you get time to pop in, you couldn't see it very well last night, is um, metallic cavalry masks with black kind of material capes, but they're floating in the trees, so it looks as though it's a cavalry charge. And it's really effective. And I think every, every art piece does work really well in every site. <clears throat> At Chester's, we've commissioned um, a company called Neon, who are an architectural art company, <clears throat> and their piece is called Cavalry 360, and um, this is one of their um, concept drawings. And the clappers, I think it looks a bit like a weather vane, will move in the wind and give the sound of cavalry moving. We thought it was really important at Chester's, if anyone's been to Chester's or goes, it's absolutely idyllic. You know, it's kind of lovely British countryside, but we want people to understand that it was filled with 500 cavalry um, men and their horses, and that they made a lot of noise. We can't, unfortunately can't make smells, um, but the noise should um, help. And depending on how windy it is, depending on how loud it is, and how many horses it sounds like there are, and how fast they're going, and I think that will bring a really different audience. So that's been really great to do something completely different um, at our sites. Um, <clears throat> You know, normally we don't do um, that sort of thing. That's coming in in late July, um, and we'll be there till um, October. <clears throat> We've also, um, some of the museums have borrowed um, some models, um, the Mules of Marius models, which are tall miniatures, but all accurate, to give um, the... There's definitely some at Tully House and Segedunum. can't exactly remember which of the sites got them, but, um, you know, the gaming world is a completely different market again. Um, our beta has done some events with um, Minecraft, you know, making that, and that's a really good way to get people into um, thinking about archaeology and giving people an idea. Although it's small, so they don't get the scale, that way we can lay out 500 cavalry in different charges. We can, um, there's, <clears throat> these are all um, infantry at the top, but they've been able to get some models. So at Sekadunum, they're looking at. Um, manoeuvres that the cavalry did and the training of the cavalry. Some of their models are able to show those and I think it's a really good, um, interesting way and hopefully it will get different visitors in. So it's been another good collaboration. <clears throat> and every exhibition always has, um, you know, a children and a family um, kind of aspect to our interpretation. So we have Victor, our cavalryman, who is um, all along the wall, um, tells you little facts and um, <clears throat> Um, is a trail, and there's some of the interactives. <clears throat> we're also, through the arts, um, uh, artworks, we're able to engage with some of the local communities, the schools, and um, other groups. But also, <clears throat> um, the project's been in touch with a couple of local pony clubs, and in July, I'll talk about a big event we're doing in July, but um, some of the pony clubs are going to try to um, recreate some of the manoeuvres that, that the Roman cavalry did. Um, at some of the county shows over the summer, and the you know that's another way into a completely different audience, horsey people, you know, to come and have a look and think, oh right, so you know now my horse lives in stable this big, but if they come to Chester's, they can look and say, oh, three horses and three men shared this space, and you know to start to so <clears throat> it's a bit of fun for the children, but actually a really interesting. Um, but probably not quite the level of experimental archaeology, you know, it's not going to be monitored, but just a really interesting um, another aspect in the sort of shows and get them to think about how good the Roman soldiers were um, as riders. <clears throat> so I thought I'd just talk about a couple of little case studies um, of what we've done and how we've been able to, within the project structure, although it's one big project funded by Arts Council England under one banner, each partner's really been able to um, adjust it to how it fits in their space, meets their audience, um, and place their strength. So, <clears throat> because at Cor Corbridge, we're not just a fort, it's enough forts on the wall. Um, we're, we also had our town phase, which is really important, and we have some beautiful pieces. We wanted to look at <clears throat> the importance of the horse in art, and um, we've been able to borrow pieces What's been really great is the partners have done loans to each other. So even though our Bea and at Segadunum they've got exhibitions of this for this project, they've still lent me pieces. Now I've been able to borrow things within English heritage from um, Richborough and from Roxeter. <clears throat> and my um, kind of 
most um, exciting part of the project for me really was that at Corbridge we have a replica tombstone of um, Flavinus, a cavalry trooper. The original is in Hexham Abbey. Lots of our stone is in Hexham Abbey. Um, <clears throat> so because he's a replica, we're quite free to do it. So we got him painted and we worked with a scenic artist who normally works and does um, props for theatres. Um, did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people. Um, what's been really great with this project is uh, the Roman Military Equipment Conference last June at St Andrews, the project put some money in and the entire conference, the theme was Hadrian's Cavalry, Hadrian's Cavalry had a session there, um, we um, had round table discussions with all the participants and uh, made lots of comments, so lots of people since then have then um, been getting lots of emails about various questions. Um, we, and so I spoke to lots of people about um, recreating um, the painting of Flavinus and it's been a real success because he's been in the museum since the 80s when we opened but he's a very, he was a very dull colour, people kind of didn't look at him that much and even I didn't, I walked past him every day and just when the artist whitewashed him you started to see details and it really helped to bring out the visual impact that you know a tombstone would have been and we've been able to talk about um, you know, the burial clubs and different aspects of the soldier's life. <clears throat> so, I mentioned briefly um, the big event that we have um, in July, and this is the other kind of major part of our, ex of our project, really, where a lot of um, kind of the money is gone. Um, and on the 1st, 2nd of July in Carlisle in Bits Park, for the first time ever in Britain, we are bringing together 30 cavalrymen, so a termer of cavalry, um, a logistical nightmare because there are no, there is no one group that has 30, you know, riders. So it's multiple groups coming together, and also lots of um, reenactors are okay at riding, but we want them to reenact manoeuvres from um, the Hippica Gymnasia. So um, the, you know, the parade manoeuvres that they did, and we have a written account from Hadrian watching this. So really complex, um, difficult manoeuvres. Ones that not we've got no um, nobody has ever tried to re recreate them in, with thirty people. Are they actually possible, or is it all hyperbole that you know this is what they said they did for Hadrian, and it was actually much simpler? So we've been working with um, there's an events coordinator who's managing this, but we've been working researchers for the most up to date translations of those documents. They'll be brought together. So although it's going to be a big public show, and hopefully people will have a great time, they'll come and see it and they'll also come and see the, um, the kind of camp because they'll have to be there for a good few days to practice beforehand. This is going to be experimental archaeology so all the reenactors will only be allowed to wear correct gear, they will be performing the correct manoeuvres and movements, it's going to be filmed, we're going to have um, lots of issues so it's a really great um, kind of piece of public spectacle hopefully, but really important experimental archaeology and there's no way that this sort of thing could have been done without um, the project because it's, as you can imagine, hugely expensive and um, we're very lucky that Carl Council have um, put some money in but hopefully by this point some of the pony clubs will have had a little go as well and then they might, you know, come along and then give some tips. <clears throat> so, that's kind of the end of my paper really. I just wanted to give you a flavour of this project. So. This year is 30 years of Hadrian's uh, War being declared a World Heritage Site. Um, we're trying to um, continue to show that we work together. I think this project's a really good um, example, and I'm very happy to answer questions about um, like different aspects of it. Thank you.